I have a failed traditional arts background. I studied art to the age uh, of about 18, uh, took a degree, uh, but my style was very representational. So lots of still lifes, lots of portraits, lots of landscapes, very boring stuff. Uh, I was always captivated by abstract art, but couldn't quite bring myself to let go with the brush and express myself in this manner. So I dropped out of university, and uh, about two or three years later, I decided it was about time to get my first computer, about the age of 21, which is very late to the game these days. So almost instantly, I realized I could use this technology, this tool, to reinvigorate my, my passion for art and design. So I took a new degree, uh, an MA called Hyperfictions, and slowly but surely worked my way back to becoming an artist once again, this time with digital media. So I started building interactive generative systems that would allow me to explore and create abstract art. Uh, I made a study uh, of cubism. Uh, so I was interacting uh, and, and well, studying the works of Picasso and Braque to try and recreate that, uh, that aesthetic in a digital context. And I thought this would make the perfect theme for my first mobile app, Fracture. So the idea behind cubism is that you're trying to deconstruct your subject and then reassemble it from slightly different angles. So that's exactly what we do with Fracture. So we load a series of images from slightly different angles of the same subject. Uh, let's get that one there. Once these are loaded into the app, I can actually go over to the canvas aspect and start painting. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm very quickly building this cubist portrait by layering up random uh, um, images from my bank. And within 10 seconds, I have this cubist portrait. <laughs> so here are a few results. We can go back to the slide. Ah, here we go. Here are a few of the results. <laughs> so this is a portrait I made. And another one. And now, I always encourage users of my apps to submit their work. And I was getting some really creative results, you know, results that I couldn't have even imagined while I was building the app. Some people started using photo filter apps to, uh, to further enhance the results. And I had a few generous, uh, um, uh, some cubist portraits of cows, which was nice. Uh, my second app is Composite. Now, I built this with Juliette Lahr. She is the interface designer. So I've been inspired by the work of Robert Rauschenberg, the American painter and artist, for many, many years now. So he's best known for his multimedia collages, or combines, as he called them. I wanted to make an app that would allow me to really capture this aesthetic, this, this uh, style of painting, this style of bringing together so many different aspects. So I made composite. So the idea behind this app is that we're actually painting using video. The live video stream that's coming in from whatever's surrounding us at the time. So as you can see what I'm doing here, I'm holding it up and just capturing elements, captured moments in time. Uh, the idea, let's get the cameraman as well. The idea here was uh, very much about uh, allowing people to remix their surroundings, essentially, to take the, uh, the buildings, the objects, the people within their space and making a collage to be able to tell their own story. Let's get one last bit of Ted in there. Thank you. So let's have a look at a few of the results. Here's a portrait that I made called Cover Girl. Uh, now, I was really excited to see that people were actually submitting work that was quite reminiscent of a Rauschenberg piece. This was a piece by Stephen Beveridge called Give Way, and it was a re reaction to the uh, recent London riots. This uh, is a piece called The Goddess Within. Now, the creator emailed me saying, I made this while lying in bed trying to fall asleep. Uh, here's a steampunk-inspired portrait. It's called Under Attack. Uh, now, people started making some quite strange submissions, uh, some quite weird <laughs> portraits. So, and that's more than welcome. Uh, and I must admit, I did a few of these myself. Uh, <laughs> I think the less said about that one, the better. Construct is the next app I'm going to show you. So this is built using a technology called String. We're using this marker here. If I just place that onto the ground and point the device at it, I can actually start building a virtual sculpture. So I can start speaking into the microphone, I can start whistling, uh, I can <laughs> do a quick whistle. <laughs> I can sing, 
I'm not going to sing, and slowly start building up this virtual sculpture that appears to exist in actual space. Essentially, it's, uh, it's an exploration of generative art in augmented reality space. So let's have a look at a few of the results. Uh, people were again using um, photo filter apps to be able to adjust their results. And being the internet, I was bound to get a couple of pictures of cats. Uh, <laughs> but then the most, <laughs> the most amazing thing happened, the most wonderful thing happened then. I had an email from a teacher from Brunswick Acres Elementary School in New Jersey. She'd been using the app to teach her kids in class about augmented reality and art and technology. They even made their own online gallery to show their work to the world. I uh, also had another email from someone saying that the, uh, they'd been using it at the Delamere Academy in Chester, which is a primary school. I just love this, this picture. Look at these kids exploring interactive arts in the classroom. Now, we use these devices so much these days that uh, I believe we, we develop a personal relationship with them. Now, with advances in technology, uh, the promise of augmented reality eyewear, I can only see this relationship getting deeper and deeper. I think we, as new media artists, have a responsibility to use this technology to build new forms of creative expression that don't just sit in art galleries, but are potentially ubiquitous. Thank you. <laughs>